All right, we're going to do a, a, a couple technical things here, but before I start that, I'm going to say something. I've, a lot of parents come in and they say, my son or my daughter doesn't have a good shot. Can you work on a shot? Sometimes they're young, sometimes they're old. I can tell in about 13 tenths of a second whether the kid has shot pucks or not. So number one, before you get all technical, start shooting pucks. You not get, I've never seen someone that sh shoots a lot of pucks have a really bad shot. It never happens. It could be better, but it never happens. So the first rule is do something and then so that there's something fixable. You don't want to have someone teach you from zero because you, you, there's nothing to really teach. You've got to get used to having some type of movement to tweak. So the first rule is shoot a lot of pucks and then make tweaks. Now, once you're shooting pucks and you're, you're aware that you want to have a better shot, you have some coordination if you're young or if you're older and you just want to tweak a few things, this is what you really should be doing. Now, typically I would set up a pile of pucks and go absolutely nuts and shoot a pile. That's how you're going to get good. Shoot thousands of pucks. The 100 a puck a day challenge is fine, but if you're really motivated, you're going to shoot a lot more than that at one session. So, anyways, the what you want to do is set up a pile of pucks, but before you get really uh, into it, think about what you're doing. So, and then once you get a good feel for the pucks, increase your speed. So here's, here's what you want to think about. When you're, first of all, is you're facing the net. So we're always going to create the habit of facing the net. Number two, when you're loading up for a shot, the, the secret here is to keep yourself in power and balance. All right? So when you're loading up on a shot, if your hands are outside your body and this leg is straight, you cannot generate power. But that's not to say you can't shoot. All you have to do is make an adjustment. So your adjustment is going to be lower that leg so you have power and then when to release the shot it has to come back to the middle of your body so you're never shooting from out here you're shooting coming through the middle of your body it's a transfer of your weight it's a hip torque so here we go all we're going to do is load up eyes to the net my goal is to uh, generate power to my other leg with a good follow through as i'm pulling the puck in i'm drawing that puck into the center of my body turning my hips coming down making downward force following through. So here we go. Remember we're scraping that ice, not tapping it. Right? Hard torque through the middle of your body. Now to create more power, push with that back leg more and get downward force. Almost jump through. I'm going to almost jump through with my left leg. One of the things that people forget about too is the, is the uh, follow through. So in a follow through, it's like any other sport. Let me just say baseball, for example. So someone does a swing in baseball, as they're coming across, when they finish their swing or golf, right? When they finish their swing, their back leg, their hip is gonna be turned, their back leg is gonna have a toe pivot and you're gonna be locked at your ankle, knee, hip. So it's the same thing when you're shooting in hockey. If you don't get your, all your, it'll be a telltale sign of whether you're shooting hard enough or not, or using generating power from your bottom half. If you finish off your shot like this, you've obviously not um, pushed all the way through. You haven't followed through. So in a follow through, what it should look like when you shot should be nose to the net, shoulder tucked, your chin tucked into your shoulder, and see how that's locked out. You, you're, you have a pivot in your toe. That's how you know that you follow through. So when you're coming through, it's bang, right here like that. That's how you know you have a good follow through. It's gonna be greasing the groove again. This is uh, not the easiest way to shoot uh, for power of the wrist shot, but it's great for greasing the groove again, all right? So it's just practice. What you're doing is you're paying attention to all the details that you've been working on, right? Loading up the one leg, transferring weight to the other, bringing all your power through the center, making sure that you're pushing with that back leg, downward force, and a good follow through, all right? So we're just gonna start off slowly. I'm just gonna do a few here. So you got a partner and you're catching, so you're, when you're catching that puck, it's not stiff arms, you're catching it, kind of loading it with your leg, all right? Come back to this foot, loading it up, loading it up, and hammer it. Ready? Grease the groove. And what this is doing is just getting your legs involved in your shooting, right? Grease the groove.
So obviously I did the forehand side and just for the purpose of the camera, I'm going to have Greeny, Greeny do it from the backhand side. Why do you do it on both sides? Is, is it the same thing or is it different? Well, what you always want to remember is that if you can do it one way, you want to do it the other. And what we're trying to do, like even though we're doing it stationary, the purpose of this is actually when you're moving the puck or when you're getting a pass while you're moving, that motion takes place. And when it, that motion takes place when you're moving, you really get a lot of power on your shot because you've got forward motion with your body, you got a little bit of speed and all that power coming, you get a real hard shot. But for practice purposes, do it stationary from both sides. So when Greeny catches the puck now, same principles, he's gonna not catch it way outside his body, he's gonna make sure he catches it loaded up on that foot, transferring weight, downward force, the whole shebang here. Ready? So load. Good. A little softer catch, Greeny. Load the legs. One. Uh, and let's get your hand down a little bit when you're shooting. You want to make sure you're bending that stick, right? One more. Okay. All right. And then one more thing here. This, this takes... Uh, this is okay. So this takes a lot of this. When I talk about activating your brain and really thinking about what you're, what you're doing, so Greeny's 26 now, right? Played pro hockey, um, and if you look at the habits, there's really good habits, but then there's things you want to tweak. So when Greeny shoots, I, if you heard me constantly saying, "Get your hand down, get your hand down, lower your hand," it's just something that he hasn't paid attention to for a long time. So it's something that he has to. Uh, he's not a jerk. He just doesn't do it naturally. So if I was, if, if he was still playing and we were going to do shooting lessons, it's one of the things I would make sure he was doing is to get uh, downward force on his stick. So when you hear me talk about your bottom hand and creating downward force, this is what's really important. Greeny, just watch for a second. So Greeny, hold your stick like this, right? So typically this is where Greeny shoots from. A couple things happens when your hands are higher. Go ahead, keep them high again. When your hands are higher, number one, push down on your stick. Right? There's not as much flux. So when you go to sh when you dr push down on that puck and shoot, you're not maximizing the technology in your stick. Now if we can come down a little bit deeper, so see how that's roughly about the level of his knee? For most guys, depending on your stick flux, it could change, but typically that's the sweet spot. That's where you want to have your hand to generate as much power. So let's show the flux of the stick now. See how you get a good bend now, right? So that's the technology you want to do when you're shooting or use when you're shooting is, is get, find the sweet spot on your stick so that it's not just you doing the work, the technology of your stick is as well. The last thing about your bottom hand is put the hands up again. This is just like stick handling. If we get used to our hands up here, look at our legs. Our legs are straighter, right? If our legs are straight, do we have power or no? We don't have power. We lose all our power and we lose a lot of our balance. So a simple thing like just bringing that bottom hand down a bit actually changes your whole body physi uh, physio physi I don't I forget how to say the word but physiologically it changes your body so for, from being straight up to being lower you're now stronger you're in more imbalance and you're going to have more power